Raoul Walsh was an actor who became one of the top Hollywood directors during the film industry's golden age. He's best known for creating films like The Big Trail, High Sierra, and White Heat. His career spanned more than 50 years and covered the early history in film. Walsh was one of the original 36 Hollywood actors, producers, and filmmakers who founded the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Though, in a somewhat ironic twist, he never ended up winning an Academy Award, nor was he ever honored with an Academy Lifetime Achievement Award, or at least not yet. For this reason, he's often viewed as being one of the most neglected, significant figures in the early development of Hollywood. Even sadder is the fact that Raoul Walsh spent the last years of his life blind. Keep watching to learn about his incredible life story and how he received the short end of the stick. Walsh's Early Film Career Raoul Walsh was born Albert Edward Walsh on May 11, 1887 in New York City. He came from a well-off Irish immigrant family and attended Seton Hall College. In 1903, his mother died. He then left home and sailed to Cuba aboard a trading ship belonging to his uncle. For the next several years, Walsh drifted around the southern U.S., Mexico, and Cuba. Throughout his wanderings, he would take on a variety of odd jobs, including as a cowboy, surgeon's assistant, and undertaker. In time, he used his horseback riding skills to become a cowboy actor with Path Studios in New Jersey. After appearing in bit roles in a handful of films, Walsh caught the attention of director Christy Caban, who helped him land a series of minor roles in decent pictures at Biograph, appearing alongside established performers like Lionel Barrymore, Mary Pickford, and Lillian Gish. Walsh seemed to thrive in these roles, leading Caban to eventually introduce him to esteemed filmmaker D.W. Griffith. Griffith at that point was an emerging star. He essentially took Walsh under his wing, flew him to Tinseltown, and secured him a few directing jobs, effectively making him his assistant. In 1913, Walsh changed his name after taking the advice of playwright Paul Armstrong. Up until then, he was known as Albert Edward, but Raoul sounded more exotic and more memorable. Walsh knew you had to stand out to make it in the entertainment industry. His first full-length film was 1914's The Life of General Villa, which included film sequences of actual battles. In the feature, General Villa even played himself. Walsh continued to act and later played John Wilkes Booth in D.W. Griffith's epic The Birth of a Nation. 1915 was an incredibly busy year for Walsh. In 12 months, he worked on 15 films including the full-length feature Regeneration, which he also wrote the screenplay for. For the remainder of the decade, he continued to direct, making several films a year. By the mid-twenties, he had developed his own signature, no-frills, straightforward directorial style, which was particularly well-suited for adventure flicks. His biggest film from this period was 1924's The Thief of Baghdad. In it, legendary swashbuckler Douglas Fairbanks was the lead. And even though a majority of Walsh's silent films are now considered lost, one of his most enduring silent film classics, What Price Glory, produced in 1926, is still available to watch. He continued to act while simultaneously directing until 1929, when he tragically lost his right eye in a car accident when a jackrabbit crashed into the windshield of his vehicle. After the accident, his eye patch made him one of the most recognizable men in film. After he directed John Wayne in his first lead role in The Big Trail, Walsh made a few notable movies in the 30s. He also made a couple of flops, such as Me and My Gal and The Bowery. He moved from one genre to the next. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Walsh's Most Successful Years His period working with Paramount from 1935 didn't greatly improve his output, but after jumping ship to Warner Brothers in 1939, Raoul started making some popular movies, including 1939's The Roaring Twenties. He followed that up with Drive By Night and High Sierra. These two films featured killer performances by James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart. Walsh is seen as coming into his element around 1941 when he made the films They Died With Their Boots On, The Strawberry Blonde, and Manpower. The following year, he put out another banger, Gentleman Jim. All four of these films were extremely successful at the box office. Later in Walsh's career, he directed three monumentally important westerns. The first was 1947's Pursued and starred Robert Mitchum. Then came Colorado Territory and The Tall Man. Both of these starred Clark Gable. These are remembered for being some of the best in the genre and notable for featuring thrilling action sequences and psychologically deep moments. After the release of these films, Walsh cemented himself as an established director of top-flight action flicks. His 1949 gangster masterpiece, White Heat, 
gave audiences an unforgettable performance of James Cagney at his peak playing a criminally psychotic character. Walsh's Later Career After Walsh's contract with Warner Brothers ended in 1953, his career began to wind down. He took on fewer scripts, but did make two more well-received films with Clark Gable. The King and Four Queens hit theaters in 1956 to rave reviews. The following year, Band of Angels was released with similar results. Walsh's final film before retiring was A Distant Trumpet in 1964. While his later films were warmly received by audiences and critics alike, they seemed to lack the intense intimacy his previous works were known for. He was known for being a bit of a ladies' man. He was married three times, first from 1918 to 1926, to silent film star Miriam Cooper. While their marriage started strong, Walsh later admitted in his autobiography he grew to hate her intensely. Walsh's next marriage was to one of her friends, actress Lorraine Miller, whom he was wed to from 1926 to 47. His third and final wife was Mary Simpson, who he married in 1947. They remained together until Walsh's death. Over the course of his marriages, though, he regularly engaged in extramarital affairs. His cheating ways no doubt contributed greatly to the downfall of his first marriages. Unfortunately, Walsh's wandering eye didn't do much wandering at all in his later years, as reportedly he was completely blind for the last few years of his life. Walsh died of a heart attack at age 93 on December 31, 1980 in Simi Valley, California. In total, he directed more than 100 films throughout his prolific Hollywood career, and while he never won an Oscar for his work, he was noted for his virile, swift-paced action and adventure movies. His directorial style was rather to the point and focused, and he had tremendous command over the performers who appeared in his films. Walsh was a skillful and exuberant director who wanted to entertain. When asked what his philosophy about movie making was, he once said he just did his job and let others make up the theories. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think Raoul Walsh deserved more attention than he received? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Facts First or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.